What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about one of the biggest announcements from WWDC 2021 and that is the availability of the async await operators in Swift 5.5 for asynchronous code. So that's a mouthful, so what the heck does that mean? Basically, this is the new way to write async code, anything that you would traditionally write with a completion handler. So I'm on the proposal page for when uh, you know this was proposed for the language way back when. And essentially, we have these try await calls here that you see, and we also have this function written with async and throws. We'll talk about what this stuff actually means and how you change your code from completion handlers to this stuff you know, moving forward with all the modern changes coming to Swift. So if that sounds good, let's go ahead and get into some code. Make sure you start by destroying the like button down below. Helps out tremendously. Subscribe for iOS and Swift. And if you're into all that, that all said, let's get into the video. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. Bear in mind, this is Xcode 13, beta one. We're gonna go ahead and stick with the app template under iOS. And I'm going to go ahead and call this project Swift Async Await. Make sure your language, of course, is Swift. And we're going to work with Storyboard for the interface today since, you know, UI isn't really the point of today's video. Go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. And first things first, we're going to go ahead and close this right panel. Expand our Xcode window. I'll jump into the view controller and we'll go ahead and give this app a run in a 12 Pro Max, perhaps. And then we'll get into our new async await implementation. So before we get into the implementation, one thing to understand is uh, why did Apple go and create this? Well, traditionally, if we wanted to do any async operation, you generally add a closure or a completion handler or callback, you know, all kind of named the same thing to a function. So let's say we had a function to fetch users. Generally, this fetch users function would take some sort of completion handler you know, that would hand back maybe the names of the users, returning void, like that. And this function itself wouldn't have any return signature. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, once you have a lot of asynchronous operations that are nested, you quickly get into syntax that looks something like this. So this will maybe be users in, and let's say we want to upload all the user profile pictures, we'll say fetch photos for you know, users, and this is going to give you some data back, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this gets a little ugly and it's not really uh, easy for the Swift compiler to check if there's anything weird going on in terms of any bugs introduced into your code. So this is where async await enters in. So what I've actually done today is I've grabbed a URL for some just dummy JSON data. It's a collection of uh, just some users that we're gonna get back. And we're gonna actually write an API call uh, with the new async await format. So let me first create a model for our data, basically a user with a name. And what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna try to be as practical as we can today. We're gonna try to go ahead and uh, create a table view uh, that renders this data. And we're gonna write out the actual API call with async awaits without the use of completion handlers. So bear with me here. I'm gonna set up a pretty basic table view. We're not gonna go deep into table cells or any of that. I've got a ton of videos on that stuff if that's what you're looking for. Uh, but today we're strictly gonna focus on the networking piece. So there is our uh, table view. We're gonna also want to have a collection of user objects uh, global here. To configure the table, we're gonna want to add the table as a sub view, as well as uh, define its uh, size and give it a data source because we need to supply data to it. We'll go ahead and conform to that uh, table view data source uh, protocol. And we'll want to go ahead and bring in the table functions, which is number of rows, which will simply be users.count, as well as cell for row. Bear with me, almost at the async await stuff that you guys came here to see. And we're just gonna DQ a cell here. We'll go ahead and return it. And I'm just gonna set the cells text label text to every user's name. So this will just be index path dot row dot name. All right, let's get into the good stuff. So how do you actually make an API call without a completion handler? Well, we're gonna want to create uh, a actual 
uh, function here to fetch our users, which is pretty simple. And instead of actually having a completion handler, we're just gonna have it return to us uh, our actual information. So before we actually get fancy with results, let's just say this guy returns a collection of users. Now, you might have alarm bells going off in your head because this looks pretty synchronous, right? Like, we want to actually make an API call, which is an asynchronous task. So what we can now do is actually annotate this function to be async. And what this lets us do is actually perform subsequent async operations that need to be waited for. So instead of uh, all that kind of jumbo theory, let's actually go into implementing it because I think it's a lot easier to understand once you see the code. So first we unwrap the URL. The first thing we want to do is get our data and uh, response back, which we're going to ignore from the URL session. The way we do that is we're going to say try to use the URL session and we need to wait for it because, you know, a network call itself is asynchronous. So try to use the URL session shared and try to go ahead and get some data uh, from a given URL. So let's go ahead and look for the proper signature. We want to get a data uh, from, I think is what I'm looking for, URL, and we don't care about a delegate today. And what this will actually do is this awaits call here is actually the magic sort of. Um, this will tell the Swift uh, compiler that this itself is an asynchronous call. You'll see that it's yelling at my return here because we need to return a collection because this function returns a collection. Now that we've actually gone ahead and created this, let me move it into a uh, actual uh, do catch block because something might go wrong. We can actually go ahead and drop that last one, I believe, as well. And now that we have this here, let's actually bring that back. I guess it's yelling at me. We want to actually decode our user. So we're going to say users is try to use JSON decoder and try to go ahead and decode a collection of user objects from the input data. And once we've gone ahead and done that, simply go ahead and return those users. But key is don't have a typo like me. And that's basically it. That's how you can go ahead and write out this async call. We should see our errors hopefully go away. Let's see. So this will never get executed, which is correct, which is why I originally deleted it. So what we're saying here is, you know, basically make a pretty simple URL a get call from uh, this URL. Now, how do we actually call this? Because traditionally what you would have done, like I was saying, is you would have done fetch users, users in, self.users is users and then reload the table. We're not going to do any of this. We're simply going to say do an asynchronous operation and we're going to get our users back from the async operations. And we're going to say go ahead and wait for the fetch users call. Once we have our users, we can go ahead and say self.users is users. And I'm not sure if we can actually do this here. Let's go ahead and give it a try. I wonder if we can capture weak self. And uh, it looks like, can we? Let's see. We'll see if he yells at me. We'll say self.users is users, just like that. And finally, we want to reload the table view on the main thread. So we're going to go ahead and say uh, self.tableview.reload data. So let's see what's going on. So this is yelling at me. Reference to captured var self in concurrency executing, uh, concurrently executing uh, code. So let's go ahead and simply say self.tableView. Looks like that's going to yell at me as well. So let's see how we're going to figure this out. So let's go ahead and drop the capture of this and let's see what the problem is. We'll go ahead and drop that. And let's see, it's still yelling at me about something. So let's see what's going on or did it compile? Let's see, let's see. Looks like it's compiling now. Go ahead and give it a run and we see our list of users and we see that it doesn't actually crash. So it's kind of weird, right? This code has changed a little bit. It's doing the exact same thing. Some people uh, initially when they saw this, they had the question of, well, aren't you still calling a closure technically because this async thing is a closure? Yes, you are. However, this becomes far cleaner once you start chaining together multiple calls. So let's say we wanted to have a bunch of users. We could, in fact, do this, except the only difference is we'd have to change all these variables and uh, just to make the compiler happy. But we would asynchronously order uh, call these um, one after another. 
So the beauty of this is that you can write all of these and you can have your asynchronous function simply return what you'd like and it makes the readability easier or at least that's Apple's claim. Now I guarantee it's going to be a little bit of time before people get used to this because closures are such an integral part of the Swift language and you know just most modern languages with callbacks. Let's go ahead and make this a little uh, better for error handling. We'll go ahead and say uh, it can return a uh, in the success case a, a collection of users otherwise an error. This will actually be a result case and what we we'll go ahead and do is here we can switch on results and in the success case we have some users in the failure case, we have an error. We'll go ahead and print the error out. And let's go ahead and create our own error. So I'll say my error. And this is going to be case failed to get users. And basically, in this case, we're going to go ahead and return a failure. We'll say fail to get users. And in this case, instead of returning an empty collection, the reason this is a little better is because we can actually propagate the appropriate error uh, up to the caller to basically interpret what went wrong. And of course, this needs to be changed to a success. So let me go ahead and give this a command B to build, give it a run, make sure we're still seeing our list of users. And we are. So this is async await in a very, very high level overview. Um, admittedly, this is a very trivial network call. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos incorporating async awaits. There are quite a few other things as well related to concurrency that Apple has introduced. Um, so we'll go ahead and talk about that. I think there's also something called an async sequence and an async map sequence. And this is a type that provides uh, asynchronous sequential iterated access to elements. So uh, I'm going a little off uh, track at this point, but you could do things in the nature of for async thing in things. So let's say you have uh, concurrent calls that you make in a for loop. Think about like a dispatch group. You can do this as well now, which I think is pretty interesting. Syntax is a little weird and wonky, still getting used to it myself, but this is all I got for you guys today. So hopefully it wasn't too confusing and I wasn't too all over the place. So if you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, smash that like button down below. Helps out a lot. Comment any questions. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on the new syntax, new signatures. Uh, and of course, subscribe to the channel. If you're into iOS, Swift, Swift UI, want to stick around, try to post daily on this channel. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.